Hello, this is Dr. Jack Jackson. In this uh, playlist, we're going to be working through Unit 3 of an introductory course in probability and statistics. And this unit is going to be focused on continuous probability. Recall that we, earlier in the course in our playlist, Unit 1 was on descriptive statistics. Unit 2 was on introduction to probability and discrete probability. And in this unit, we're going to... Um, we're going to extend the ideas of probability so that we can deal with continuous random variables, continuous distributions. And this is really going to set us up for our fourth unit on uh, inferential statistics. This playlist will also include some sampling distributions in the central limit theorem at the end, which will go back and include some discrete as well as continuous distributions. So in my class, this is going to be set up into four different basic homework sets, uh, roughly a week uh, spent on each of these during a normal term. Unit uh, 3, homework set 3.1, will have sections 1 and 2 of these uh, notes, continuous versus discrete distributions. And we'll, so we'll see how we extend from discrete to continuous distribution, what stays the same and what has to be modified slightly. And then we'll start talking about in section two about working with continuous uh, CDF. And homework set 3.2, we'll see how to work with the continuous PDF. And then we'll start talking about a couple of different distributions, particularly the uniform distribution and triangular distributions, mainly as a way to make us understand a little better how PDFs work. And then we'll start introducing calculator technology in uh, section 6 and working with continuous distributions and calculator technology. And then we're going to get to the big part that is the main part of uh, this unit which is talking about normal distributions. The most important distribution we'll study all semester. And then in homework set 3.4 we'll look at some other very important distributions, the T, chi-square, and F distributions. And we'll learn how to use calculator shortcuts to do probabilities and inverse probabilities and so forth. So normal T, chi-square, and F distributions uh, along with um, the binomial and hypergeometric from last unit are the main ones that are going to be used in inferential statistics. And then we get to sampling distributions and the central limit theorem, which puts us at the threshold of being ready to go into inferential statistics. So basically in this unit, we're going to extend the idea of probability and probability distributions to the situation where the sample space is uncountably infinite. In particular, we want to see how to extend and modify the concepts of the probability density function, PDF, and the cumulative density function, CDF, for distributions where the CDF is a continuous function. So the basic concepts will be comparing and contrasting discrete and continuous distributions and the properties of the PDF and CDF graphs. We'll start with that basic concept material. Notice that I'm going to cover this material in more thoroughly than is typically covered in most published textbooks. Um, my opinion, the, the material here is a little weak in a lot of the, uh, the, the published textbooks. So the probability and inverse probability calculations will then be performed with several types of continuous distributions, including uniform, triangular, exponential, normal, T, chi-squared, and F distributions, and application problems are woven throughout the unit. So I want to make a little comment here about probability tables versus technology. In the old days before the availability of scientific calculators, Textbooks typically had tables of values for such things as square roots, cube roots, uh, logarithms, trigonometric functions, various probability functions, CDFs such as normal tables or binomial tables. And these tables were used for many types of calculations, including those that are used in probability statistics. Now, if someone uses a table which has four significant digits and then uses these values from the table for further computations, this is the same as rounding off in the middle of a calculation. And when you, use, when you round off to four digits and then use that to do further calculations, you typically have final answers that are only 
two, sometimes maybe three digits that are correct, that are significant. And this problem is made worse if one has to approximate values between those given in a table. Now fortunately, now that we have scientific graphing calculators, and we have those are readily available to all of us, we can easily obtain answers which are correct to at least nine significant digits for anything that the calculator has built in or we can write a program for. And of course that assumes that the input data is precise enough for those digits to be accurate. So because of this, you will no longer find the now obsolete tables of roots and logarithms and trigonometric functions in the back of, say, algebra textbooks. Unfortunately, you will still find the equally obsolete statistical tables in most statistics books. To make matters worse, some of the explanations of me of the textbooks and the helpers on the homework refer to these tables. And worst of all, they sometimes give answers to four significant digits, which are accurate only to two significant digits, which is a bad thing. It wouldn't be so bad using the tables if they would then round their, their uh, final answers off to two significant digits. Now, we will not be using any statistical tables for any part of my statistics classes. For my classes, you will have to know how to use your graphing calculator to perform all computations for the course. So, in modern day, there's no reason why you're going to be doing any kind of, of calculations with, with statistical tables here. Um, you know, in the real world, people are going to have a calculator if they're going to do any kind of calculations anyway. And so, uh, since the calculator will give us, more easily give us answers and give us answers that are too accurate to many, many decimal places, it makes sense to just use the calculator. Or some other technology such as a spreadsheet like Excel or a statistical program such as uh, StatCrunch or SPSS or Minitab or SAS or something like that.